James, are the vertical stripes a bit more slimming? Could you just check one of the cameras for us? No, definitely not. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> Hello, Mark here from Cosmic Audio, and today we're going to look at how we recorded a jazz quartet live at Cosmic Audio. So the purpose of the recording was primarily to do a video shoot for the band. They want something for their Facebook, social media, YouTube, website, bloody, 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 all that lovely stuff. Um, and obviously one of the keys to getting a good video recording is to also capture a good audio recording. You don't just want to capture what the cameras are capturing with their own built-in microphones, because that would sound crap. So we multi-tracked the, the session at the same time. Um, the guys were close together up the end of the live room, so we had to work a little bit to minimize spill between instruments. But at the end of the day, look at what genre you're recording and, and kind of calculate your microphone placements accordingly. So we were doing live jazz. So if there's some bass coming through, upright bass coming through in the drum overheads, don't really care. If there's a bit of Rhodes piano coming through in the sax mic, don't really care. No one's gonna be overdubbing a solo. So as long as the spill doesn't sound awful, then it's really nothing to worry about. Uh, so the lineup was drums, upright bass, saxophone and Fender Rhodes piano. Um, let's talk a little bit about what microphones we used and where. So let's start with the drums. Um, we had the ones I talked about on our few sort of our top three tips for recording drums video. Um, you'll see that we use these Tom and microphones on the drum overheads and it was the same for this session. So these are small diaphragm microphones so they pick up loads of cymbal sparkle, get the transients of the cymbals nicely. Great microphones, really cheap. In fact, every microphone we used cost around about £100. These were £100 for a pair. Um, microphone on the snare, we used the Audix i5 again. Again, around about £100. Great microphone. On the bass drum, we used an AKG D112, which again, you can pick up for around £100. On the Rhodes piano, we used the best value microphone of all time. If you can only afford one microphone and you want to know which one to get, then pick up one of these. This is the Shure SM57 and it's a brilliant microphone. You can use it on anything. You can use it for vocals, you can use it on drums, you can use it on guitar cabinets, you can use it for absolutely everything. And if you get an SM58, if you do this, then you've got an SM57. So brilliant, two mics for the price of one. Although you can't use both at the same time. Or can you? No, you can't. So great value microphone. So that we used on the, uh, the Rhodes was going through a, a nice Fender amp and we used that, just a mono microphone on the amplifier. Um, on the saxophone, we used a ribbon microphone. Now, those of you that know me well know that I'm not a huge fan of ribbon microphones. A lot of them can sound a bit dull um, and you need to really EQ the top end in. Um, not a huge fan, never really have been, but this microphone, now this is available, uh, there's two versions of this. There's a company called Aventone who, who make one for around 300 pounds. And then there's Fame, which is, um, musicstore.de or dv247 or whatever they're called these days that's like their own brand now these are actually made in the aventone factory uh, i've had a pair of the aventone ones and i've compared them with this they sound the same they look the same apart from the color the aventone ones are red or blue or whatever color you you choose to pick these ones are silver um, and this mic sounds absolutely awful on anything other than horns. You put this in front of a sax or a trombone or a trumpet and it's just magic. It's got that really warm ribbon sound. It, it rolls off the highs a little bit so you lose kind of harshness and, and, and a little bit of squawk. Um, it's got a nice large ribbon in there which you can see through the grill. And even better is that when you finish the session uh, you can have a shave with it. Great microphone, round about a hundred pounds. Um, so that's the drums, Rhodes. What did we do on the bass? Well, on the bass, the upright bass had a pickup, which sounded great. Um, so we used a large diaphragm condenser. Again, you can pick these up for around about a hundred quid. 
Rode NT1A, great all-round microphone. You could run an entire studio with nothing but these and these, and pretty much everything you did would sound great. You might need a little bit of EQ here and there, but these two, you've got all your bases covered, seriously. Um, so we use that about two foot away from the base um, just to pick up some of the lovely warm low end coming from it of course it also picked up a bit of sax it also picked up a bit of cymbals because the guys were quite close together so in the mix i rolled a lot of the highs off of this we'll go through the mix in a minute um, but this captured the overall kind of warm low end of the bass and then we used the pickup to capture more of the mids and the highs and of course with the pickup we didn't get any spill because it's a contact mic actually in the bass so that's that so let's have a look at what we did mix wise um, so let's go through the drum mics. Now the, the, the kick mic <coughs> scenario for, for this particular recording, because it's a jazz quartet, we're not going down the traditional rock and roll route. So normally with a, with a rock kick drum, we'd quite often put a microphone on the inside of the drum, capturing the batter head side, getting lots of click, getting lots of high end through, as well as the general warm sort of low end of the drum. And then we'd also put a large diaphragm condenser on the on the outside, um, on the audience side of the drum to, to pick up more low end as well. With this particular kit, we didn't. The, the bass drum sounds really, really low, uh, almost like a floor tom. Let me just solo the you can you can so that's the bass drum in it and and if you're doing jazz you want generally if it's acoustic-y quartet -y or trio jazz like this then you want kind of a very natural sound so we literally just put the microphone um up to the drum and 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 that was that again that was a d112 we used on the on the bass drum um i used that instead of a large diaphragm condenser just to try and keep the spill down as it was a live session uh, so that's our, let's go through the drum mics one at a time. So that's our, that's our bass drum mic. Uh, snare, so we had the i5 on the snare. So no gating on this. If you watched our um, top three tips on how to record drums video, you'll notice that I gated the snare, I gated the toms, I gated the kick drums. I, I gated basically everything apart from the overheads. Um, for this particular case, I didn't gate anything at all because we just wanted a natural uh, a really natural sound. Let's just go forward to a bit where there's some drum drumage going on. So that's our kick and our snare soloed. Let me just listen to that. We'll let you listen to that for a few seconds. So we had the, we also had the floor tom mic as well, um, but Oren mainly used the floor tom as a table uh, to, for his notes and his phone. So I've muted the the, um, the floor tom mic out of this particular project. Okay, so overheads, we've got, let me just solo the overheads on their own. So we've got the tom and uh, small diaphragm condensers on the overheads. Now panning wise, again, going for a natural sound. Sometimes if we're doing a big, big rock record i'll pan the overheads quite widely to get a really massive drum sound in this case again we wanted a natural sound so i've literally just panned them imagining you were standing five or six feet from the drummer which is kind of where the cameras were then you'd hear the cymbals the, the sort of far extremities of the drum kit at roughly 20 one way and 20 the other way so i've just panned them at, at, at 20 percent either way just to give a little bit of a a stereo image let's put the kick and snare in with those and that's the entire drum sound because we're not we're not using the floor tom at all so you can hear there's a bit of sax coming through a little bit of roads coming through a little bit of bass coming through but you know really not not a lot of spill at all bearing in mind how close they were that's down to careful mic positioning um so making sure the overheads are pointing down and, 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 and picking and sort of quite high up pointing down at the kit. Um, <clears throat> and it's down to the room. The rooms are fairly, we designed it as a fairly dead room. So there's not a lot of, so you don't get a lot of reverberation coming back off the walls. So that tends to keep spill to a minimum because we do a lot of live recording here. Live recording is my favorite thing to get a band in, get them all vibing off of each other mic everything up that's my favorite way to do a recording so we do a lot of a lot of live band recording let's just start the song again okay let's have a little listen to the bass so this is the bass pickup so this was actually in the 
in the upright bass. I love upright bass, it's such a cool sound. So that's picking up a lot of high, a lot of mid, as well as a little bit of low end. Uh, let's solo the mic we had on it. You can hear a lot more low end in that, or you'll hear if you're wearing headphones or listening through monitors, you won't hear so well on, on a phone or an iPad. Uh, so, separately, they sound a bit rubbish. Um, put them together, and that's got all your bases covered. So you've got the mic picking up the low end, the pickups picking up everything else, the combined signal sounds great, and we're just aiming for something that sounds great. At the end of the day, let's put the drums in with that and see what we've got. Brilliant. So next up is the Rhodes. Now it's a real Fender Rhodes. Uh, it's a Stage 54, so it's one of the shorter ones. Great little piano. Um, Michael's quite short, so perfect for him. He won't mind me saying that, I'm sure. Uh, if you do, Michael, just punch me next time you see me. Let's have a little bit of a listen to the Rhodes. So that's going through a lovely Fender amp. Nice bit of warmth out of the amp, bit of reverb as well. Players often ask us, should they have reverb on their amp? Should they use their delay pedal? I always say, if it makes you perform differently, if you're playing into the delay, or if it just makes you feel better having reverb on your amp, just put it on. It's, you know, whatever gives the best performance at the end of the day. If you don't put it on, we can add it later. If you do put it on, it's there. And, you know, as long as you're happy with the sound and we're happy with the sound, then it's not, whoa, 30 second reverb on that, really? Um, then yeah, if it makes it sound better, then great, put it on. So that's your Rhodes. And that's it, four musicians. Oh, no, sorry, saxophone, forgot Harry. Sorry, Harry. Uh, let's skip forward a bit to some sax. Okay, so what really surprised us with this is the, so bearing in mind this is a ribbon microphone, so it's a figure of eight microphone. It picks up sound equally from that direction as it does from that direction, as with most ribbons. Um, the spill, and it was four foot from the drum, the saxophone this side, and then four foot from the drum kit. It's like he's in a separate room. There was we we just got the positioning just right, so as there's there, there just isn't any spill. You could mute the saxophone on the entire track. And you know, it's it's a tiny bit of cymbal, tiny bit of bass, but the spill on that is there just isn't any. Perfect, that means you can compress it a little bit more if you need to without bringing up any sort of sub horribleness or anything like that. So that's it, that's the microphone settings on the band. Let's have a little look at what we did when we mixed it. So hardly any processing on this really, a little bit of reverb. Um, again, I've used entirely Slate plugins because I love the Slate plugins. So let's have a look at what we did on the kick. Uh, so we've got two EQs just for a, rather than cranking one EQ, I've used two different flavors of EQ at slightly more subtle settings. Um, we've got the SSL EQ, add in a little bit of low end, a little bit of 70 Hertz there and just a little bit of top end as well. Um, Neve doing pretty much the same thing, a little bit of top, a little bit of low, and then both of those are going into the FG Stress um, compressor, which is doing hardly anything. It's literally taking the, the tiniest, tiniest amount of gain off only on the most vigorous hits. Uh, let's move on to the snare. So again, hardly any processing at all. A um, little bit of top end, a little bit of a high shelf on there. Tiny boost at 3.2K, tiny boost at 100 hertz just to bring a bit of low end depth out of the snare sound. And that's it, compressor set to a ratio of four. So this is the um, 1176 style compressor doing literally nothing. It's again, just on the hardest hits, it's, back, it's just backing it off a of DB just to kind of level everything out slightly and then we're going through the revival plugin just to give a little bit of extra sparkle on the top and a little bit of extra thickness in the bottom that's that overheads tiny bit of eq tiny bit of top end um, i've notched out a little bit of sort of three and a half four k 
um, just because that can sometimes sound a bit boxy on, on drums. So I've put a fairly wide cue on that and just taken out sort of between three and 4K. Um, compressor again, just it's compressing a little bit harder than the snare mic, but it's just capturing the, the kind of heavier transients and just pulling it down and making it sound a bit more like a record. That's that, I've run out of screen real estate, so I can't see what channel I'm on. So let's select it on here. Let's select the roads, see what we did to that. So the roads, again, Neve style EQ, tiny, tiny bit of top shelf there, tiny little bit of 3.2K, tiny little bit of, of sort of 1.8K, um, just notched out slightly i did that with the saxophone as well if you if you if you get honky frequencies in something like a saxophone um, or a vocal or a guitar it's nearly always going to be somewhere between one and two k so that's a good frequency to to sort of zoom in on and and have a look at compression a little bit of compression on the roads again just to catch those those high notes there's a bit of automation on the track as well so when michael does the solo does the road solo it just brings the the roads out a little bit more that's that, have a look at the saxophone. So again, very similar settings. I've rolled off a little bit of the high end on that, um, giving it a tiny, tiny boost at 4.8K just to bring a bit of life out. And again, a tiny cut at around 1K on that. And then a tiny little boost at about, about 100 Hertz just to give it a bit of body. Um, compressor doing hardly anything again shaving off one to two db on the on the peaks um, and a little bit of thickness on the revival plugin just to give it that that nice little bit of low end warmth that's that bass so the bass pickup again you can see the eq settings there so i've brought a bit of the mid out with that there's a little boost at 3.2 k and i bought a bit of low end out at around about 70 80 hertz on that, on the bass microphone. <coughs> uh, so we've got a bit of compression going on just to even things out. I've taken all of the top end out on that. So complete cut at the high shelf, um, complete cut at 3.2K and a complete cut at 1.6. So that's taken most of the top end out. We were getting some spill from the cymbals in the um, in the bass mic and I really wanted the mic just to capture the low end so I've kind of put uh, I could have used a different EQ I could have used Logic's own EQ and just put a, um, a low pass on it and just brought the frequency down um, but this just sounds slightly better the Neve EQ just sounds slightly better to me if there's some aggression to bring out you can really easily bring out aggression with it if you want to soften things subtly you can do that I just prefer the sound of that to the um, the standard sort of Logic style EQs. So that's that. Uh, reverb, we've got a bit of reverb, we've got Verb Suite Classics on there just on the default setting. Um, and that's it, a little send on, on each channel. Sounds great, that's a fantastic reverb. And let's have a little look. A couple of you asked me what I'd done on the master bus when we did the drum video. Um, so I'll show you what I've done on this one. We've got the Slate Virtual Tape machine not really going into the red it's just kind of let's bypass it and you'll hear what it's doing it's quite subtle it sort of thickens up the low end and <clears throat> cuddles the sound slightly when you put it back it's just a more present it does what tape does it's a great plug in it just does something nice to the sound so that's that underneath that we've got the vbc rack which again is a great plug in so three compressors um I tend to use on the master bus if I'm whether I'm doing any mix bus processing that's going off to someone else for, for mastering and I, I want to add a bit of compression or whether I'm mastering a track that someone else has mixed and I think it needs a bit of compression I'll go for two or three compressors doing a lot less than one compressor doing a lot more it's a more natural sound particularly when mastering the, the critical thing when mastering is that you don't want to break someone's mix you want to enhance it bring the best out of it and in some cases do nothing at all um, so i'll tend to go for three compressors doing not a lot rather than one compressor doing three times as much if that makes sense so you can see we've got the ssl style one on the top which is literally doing nothing um, and then the next one down just shaving off a, a db or so 
um, and again with the very new style at the bottom that's shaving off around about a db there so they're really not working hard at all but they're, they're character compressors so they add a sound let's bypass it and you'll hear the difference so this is off Again, it just adds a, let's go back to a bit of, bit of track. It just adds some niceness to it. These are great plugins. They do what the analog stuff does. If you put, uh, there's, there's compressors like the Chiswick Reach compressor where someone once described it as like squirting your audio through chocolate gatto. And that's a great um, analogy. And, and the Slate stuff kind of does that. Um, again, with it off. It's just all a little bit thinner, a little bit more mono a little it's just missing a bit of mojo you put that on you can hardly hear any compression going on at all it's just doing something really nice to the sound and i, I love the um the vbc rack that's a great plugin great on drum buses as well and then to finish it off and to get it up to a healthy level for the video um so normally if this, if this was an album normally i don't um master music that i've recently mixed and uh, you know, we'd normally, if I mix something and it needs to go out fairly quickly, I'd send it off to someone else for mastering um, because it's important to have a second set of ears and all that kind of stuff. Um, but in this case, it was a, you know, it had to go out fairly quickly, um, and it's a video. At the end of the day, it's not, it's not an album. Um, the mastering is just as important, um, but I, I kind of did that as part of the mix rather than as a separate process. Uh, so we've just got. Isotope 7, uh, there's an EQ which is doing nothing, compressor which is doing largely nothing, just taking a few very sort of top peaks off. Uh, the imager which I just wanted to give everything a little bit a bit more stereo image mainly to annoy the people that are listening on their phones. Um, you know if you listen on headphones or speakers you'll appreciate the wider stereo image. Um, but I appreciate this is a video, so a lot of people will be listening on their phones, but most of those are stereo anyway these days, aren't they? It'll just make it sound like it's coming out your elbow and your finger instead of the, the actual phone. And then we've got the limiter. So I've set the ceiling at uh, minus 0 0.2 dB just to allow for any um, conversion in algorithms or, or things like that. Um, I do a lot of mastering for Apple Music and iTunes and part of their specification is that you need to leave a certain amount of room for, for conversion into different formats. Uh, so that's just brought that down. Normally I'd, I'd aim for between minus 0 0.2 and minus 0 0.5 depending on where it's going. In this case it'll be going on YouTube, it'll be going on Facebook, so I've just gone for, for minus 0 0.2 you tend to, to not get any artifacts at that level and limiting wise it's hardly doing anything um it's you know the track's loud enough it doesn't need to be cranked all the streaming services and everything pull louder stuff down these days rather than boosting quite the stuff up um i think the level for spotify is like minus 24 db or something like that um so there's no point really in cranking your masters too much anymore you just destroy them and then the the streaming services just pull it down anyway so hopefully an end to the loudness was so that's basically it so a fairly simple setup um just literally four microphones on the on the kit uh one mic and one pickup on the bass um dynamic mic on the roads through an amp and this ribbon mic which these are just great um any horn tracking we do first choice is to pull one of these out they're just for horns they're fantastic for anything else they're rubbish if you use them as drum overheads they're appalling uh vocals through this sound awful uh put it in front of a guitar amp <laughs> sounds rubbish but put it in front of a sax or a trumpet or a trombone or, or any kind of brass instrument and they're magic really good value microphone so that's it i hope you enjoyed the video if you did give us a thumbs up if you didn't give us a thumbs down um, please subscribe if you're, using, if you're watching this on YouTube and let us know what you want to see we've got some other videos coming up we're going to do a choir recording tonight actually so you'll see the vertical slimming stripes again at some point um, so we're recording a choir in a church um, about two or three miles down the road later this evening so we'll do a video on that and show how we record and process a, a, 
a nice full female choir. Um, anything else you want to know, anything you'd like to see, please let us know in the comments below and we'll do our very best to make it happen for you. Thanks very much and we'll see you soon. Thank you.